Hello everyone, so today I want to talk to you about overcoming fear as an artist and I want to tell you a few ways, I'll show you a few ways that I like to overcome fear, which has helped me in many, many cases, especially working with brands or commissions. All right, so what you see in front of you is a painting that I started and halfway through the painting, it was going a little bit crazy. This splash of ink in the middle um, was supposed to be a flower at first, you can see that it started to be a little overworked I started to add too much color too many lines and if you've seen any of my paintings and videos you know that I really love loose fluid effortless painting so what I would suggest if if you're working on something and you feel like it's being overworked it's just not going the way you expected it to go stop halfway through the painting sit it to the side go for a walk wait a few hours or even maybe wait a couple of days and then go back to that painting with just a fresh set of eyes and I promise you it will help you to see the painting in a different way and see how it can be transformed. I really don't like to waste watercolor paper so this is a great practice not to waste paper and to actually let go of that layer of fear of it being perfect. So that brings me to my first point which is letting go of perfection. So I'm going to read a quote from this blog that I like to read is by it's jamesclear.com and I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description box but it says it is natural to judge your work it is natural to feel disappointed that your creation isn't as wonderful as you hoped it would be or that you're not getting any better at your craft but the key is not to let your discontent prevent you from continuing to do the work and I just have to amen on that that is so true it sounds cliche but we are our own worst critiques and sometimes we can just get in that in that practice of the idea of everything being so perfect that it just hinders us from moving forward or doing anything at all and I'll tell you a story about a few years ago I did a big kickstarter to fund a program for me um, in fashion design for London College of Fashion and I did a collection of work fashion illustrations I edited it to a T had it perfect you know, all the fashion illustrations professionally printed out. And I sold those illustrations to help with the Kickstarter. So a friend of mine was helping me to pack for the fundraiser. And she saw this little box of fashion illustrations sit it to the side, set to the side. And um, she thought that that was a part of the collection. But I was telling her, no, that's a box that I plan on going through later to throw some of those illustrations away. Because to me, those were like those warm-up paintings that you know I've started and maybe it didn't look as professional so I set it to the side or you know just discarded it out of my mind so she su suggested that I bring those paintings to the fundraiser as well so what I did was I brought them but I discounted them so people did not know the difference between the final paintings and the practice paintings or the paintings that I thought were professional enough. They thought that everything was in one and they were confused as to why these paintings were discounted and these paintings were, weren't discounted. So I really felt crazy having to explain them. Well, it's, these are not as perfect as these. And they're looking at me like, what do you mean? What's wrong with them? You know? So that just goes to show that a lot of times it's just us. It's really just in our own head about what's what looks nice or what looks professional or what looks acceptable or whatever just create something and have the freedom to just do it put it out there so my challenge to you is to take some old paintings that you made a set to the side rework them add a little something to it and share it with somebody even if you don't share it on social media just share it with a friend share it with somebody it will be good to share it if you have like a facebook or an instagram though Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is um, making creativity a priority. So I hear people say all the time, you inspire me so much to start watercolors or to pick back up painting with watercolors, but I do not have the time. I have children, I have a full-time job, I have this, I have that. Everybody has something that they have to do. Everybody's busy. But what you have to do is you have to make creating a priority if you want to get good at it so I like to uh, make my schedules for the week on Sunday so Sunday evenings I just take out my calendar and I pencil in whatever I have to do for the week maybe for you it's another day of the week but whenever you have that time 
schedule in a few hours a week just to create. So when, once you do that, people will know because a lot of times it's other people or priorities for other other people that sucks up our time. People will know that so-and-so on a Sunday from 12 to 2, she's using, she's painting, practicing with watercolors. Don't call her, don't bother her. You know, it's just like she's going to work. So scheduling that time, if you just say, okay, whenever I get around to it, you will never get around to it. Trust me. You really have to intentionally set aside that time to perfect your craft if that's what you want to do. All right, guys. So that's my two cents on overcoming fear. A few ways that I like to overcome fear, just pretty much just letting go. Um, Please let me know ways that you have chosen or ways that you are overcoming fear because every creative has to have something in place to just push that fear to the side. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe below where I upload weekly videos on how to use watercolors and how to do fashion illustrations. All right. I will see you guys next week. Ciao.